our NBC Wall Street Journal poll confirms the results of other polls since the convention showing Donald Trump's support declining, Hillary Clinton's lead growing. Before the uh, two political conventions, Hillary Clinton led by five. Now she leads by nine, 47 to 38 percent over Donald Trump. If you include the third party candidates, the Green Party, the Libertarian Party, she still holds a nine point lead. They don't hurt her. Now, let's look at presidential qualities and see how people are evaluating the candidates. Trump has an advantage on a couple of different metrics, including standing up for America, slight edge, on the economy, plus four, on handling crime, plus eight. But Hillary Clinton has advantages on those more typically associated with presidents, on being commander-in-chief, 11 points, on handling a crisis, 18 points, on caring about People like you, 16 points on handling foreign policy, 26-point edge. So Donald Trump's in a very difficult position now. We have Republican candidates for Congress distancing themselves. One, uh, Adam Kinzinger of Illinois has uh, rejected Trump's candidacy. Uh, Mike Kaufman in Colorado has got an ad up now saying uh, that he doesn't like Donald Trump. He's going to stand up to Trump. So this is a moment where uh, Donald Trump, when he uh, gives a... Uh, speech to the Detroit Economic Club on Monday really badly needs a reset uh, because he is in a position that's very difficult to come back from right now, guys. John, I don't know if you saw this story in the New York Times today about Donald Trump and the economy, and I wanted to ask you about it in terms of uh, his ability, whether he wins or loses, uh, to potentially reshape the way the Republican Party has thought about economics historically. Um, I know our own Mr. Kudlow might disagree with some of this, but this piece suggested, suggests that there's a new group of people called the Reformicons uh, that are rejecting additional tax cuts for those making over $250,000. They're promoting the benefits of global trade but helping displaced workers. They're ruling out privatizing things like Social Security and Medicare. How much of this do you think is real? Well, the Reformicon movement is real. But there's no evidence that Donald Trump is attached to any movement whatsoever. Donald Trump's message is Donald Trump. And so to the extent that there is overlap between him and any faction of the Republican Party, traditionalists on tax cuts for the, at the top or uh, on uh, not touching entitlements or other things that perhaps reformicons might lean toward as a way of appealing to more middle class voters, there's no reason to think that any of this is important to Trump personally. Uh, and so you can't really talk about reshaping the Republican Party for somebody who is fundamentally about himself. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't see Trump reshaping the Republican Party. I see him as an idiosyncratic event that right. is highlighting the um, uh, trends in right. our politics and our culture uh, that... Uh, he is going right. to go away at some point, and the Republican Party's got to figure out what they are That may or may not be, that. John. One quick question. I know the professor here has got a question, too, but, of course, today is Jobs Friday. We're going to be getting some jobs numbers. How do you think those numbers, uh, whether they're good or bad, work into this, especially given not just this particular month, but I don't know if you heard the last interview with Phil Orlando that's suggesting that August is always uh, particularly idiosyncratic and unique and sometimes comes in remarkably low and how that plays into all of this. Honestly, Andrew, I don't think they matter at all. Uh, the, we're on a trend of moderate job growth, and so whether it's 180 or 110 or 210, uh, I don't think that changes how people think about the economy at this point, and they certainly won't change how people think about Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. John, very quickly, um, I'm reminded, I think, of the lead that John Kerry had for a while, was it? And I mean, there have been double-digit leads that have been overcome. What is your sense of, of how serious this is for uh, Donald Trump and whether or not double-digit leads like this can be, uh, 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 misses like this can well, be? Well, there overcome. haven't been double-digit leads overcome in the modern era of polarization. You had in, in for example, 1976, uh, Jimmy Carter came out of his Democratic convention with a 30-point lead, uh, <laughs> and Gerald Ford made it very close. But uh, Barack Obama never led Mitt Romney by 10 points. Uh, it, he never led, well, he may have led John McCain by, by 10 points, but he ended up winning by seven. Hmm. Uh, we haven't had a, a presidential race that was decided by double digits since 1984. Uh, it's very, hmm. very difficult to come back from a deficit of this magnitude.
Pretty good, John. You didn't know that was coming. You had all those numbers right at your uh, fingertips. There. What was what was the uh, double digit in 1984? What was the actual percentage number? Do you remember? Uh, I believe uh, Ronald Reagan got 59 and Walter, Walter Mondale, Mondale got 41. Yeah. And since then, wow. uh, uh, President George H.W. Bush won by about eight points over Mike Dukakis. Uh, President Obama won by about seven. But double digit leads are not common uh, in our politics anymore. And the reason is the country's evenly divided, and Democrats and Republicans are so fixed in their views and their, the diminished number of swing voters that it's just hard to move the numbers. That's why, that's why presidential approval ratings don't go as high as they used to go because you're not going to see the voters of the other party credit the president in power. And so uh, absent an extraordinary event like 9-11, you just don't see numbers uh, oscillate quite that much. That's why it was so unusual how low President Bush fell at the end of his term. Right. Um, but no, it's... it's uh, Donald Trump is in an extremely deep hole right now in New Hampshire poll that we uh, talked about yesterday morning where mm -hmm. he's behind by 15 points. He's only getting 63 percent of Republicans. If, mm -hmm. if that, if, if you're, if you can't get more than two-thirds of your party, that's a recipe for a catastrophic loss. Yeah. Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.